Good morning, sports fans. Welcome to the Cheap Seats on 96.3 FM. There goes a piece of ham. <laughs> we are broadcasting live outside in front of Jake's Furnishings, where you can make it your own, Jake. Good day. <laughs> Jake Johnson, Scott Kirby with us this morning, Lloyd behind the camera, and our producer, Jim Ash. Morning, Jim, Jim. Hambone Ash. Hambone. <laughs> Careful as you're driving by here, folks. There could be some flying saucers coming towards the roadway there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot going on in sports today. Baseball regular season about to wrap up. Two games left in the regular season, and the cards are still hanging on uh, by, by, by a, a thread. thread. And, uh. Uh, uh, real quick, the other night, a controversial call uh, against the Cincinnati Reds down in St. Louis. Yeah. A, uh, a walk-off. I guess a walk-off uh, double. Uh, it was ground rule lot, double. A lot of people I mean, feel it, it really was a ground rule double, but see, yeah, that's I didn't think it was either. It, it, it was definitely a ground rule double. Now, how, how, explain that because it didn't go into the stands. It, okay. hit, it hit off the wall. Correct. However, the the, the Cardinals' wall it goes up. I think uh, about eight foot, and that's the top of the wall. Well, mm -hmm. then it, it sets back another foot. Uh, or it's actually probably a two-foot area where during the summertime you'll see flowers and stuff uh, embedded there. That's technically above that where that gra where that area is is a home run. Okay. So it bounced, went up, and hit off that that wall behind over the home run marker. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Well, with that, what should have happened is the outfielder should have put his hands up in the air. The moment you do that. The, the umpire has to make a ruling. With him not doing that, it did not force the umpire to make a ruling. The umpire was running towards the outfield. Maybe he didn't see it clearly and, and, and didn't know. Well, play so play continued. They threw the ball in as if play still right. alive. Runner scores. Uh, the shortstop, however, did not really make a good throw to home because I think he felt like it was a ground rule double. That's my opinion. Well, don't if, know. You're, if you're an out-of-town player and you don't know the ground rules of that particular park, which every park is different, uh, the, I the mean, manager got, should have known. Well, you 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 have the manager, yeah, but he's also probably 300 feet away. Correct. Uh, However, you but ha you have to still play as if the play is still alive, and that's where the the umpire should step in and say, you know, a ground rule double, put the, him back. But they didn't even have that opportunity because right after the game, those umpires. They were well, wrong. not not necessarily. You get you technically get thirty seconds to appeal a call. However, in the rules, it also says that you need to get let the umpires know almost immediately after the play that there is a chance you might be challenging that. With that, the umpires were looking into the Cincinnati Reds dugout, and they're not seeing any movement in there. The the their manager was not coming to the top step to say, "Hey, we might look at this." Now the manager actually walked down, so was walking down in the tunnel, and one of the guys was like, "Hey, that's a ground rule double. You need to get out there." Okay. He took off running out of there. Well, it'd been 28 seconds by the time he got out to the top step. You only get 30 seconds to appeal. Okay. And he didn't make the initial, uh, I don't know, gesture that they they may be appealing. Okay. So that's what the umpires were doing. Well, like, that, well that's he's gone. We're out of here. That could come down to that particular game if the Absolutely. if the Cardinals hang on to either take over the wild card over the Giants or tie. You know, the Giants have to look at that like, you know, that's a lost opportunity. But two games left. Cardinals are still down a game. Yep. Uh, the Mets, uh, they're, it looks like they're per, they're going to at least the tie. The Mets are in, yeah. I'd say. Unless uh, something just crazy happens. But, uh, you know, today, tomorrow are going to be – you know, big games. Uh, can the Cardinals sweep the Pirates and take over that wild card lead? Uh, you know, we, me and uh, a good buddy of mine, we were talking about this, uh, how going into the Cincinnati Reds series, you had to be thinking, well, we got Cincinnati and then Pittsburgh. Well, Cincinnati's played well. Oh, and then they here, play well here, against the Cardinals. Here the last about three weeks, the Cincinnati Reds have played very good baseball. They're hustling like they got something to prove for next year, and I mean they're playing good baseball. The Pirates, on the other hand, have not. They've went the other direction. Mm -hmm. um, well, they—they they, I think what it is, 
Milwaukee's also playing really good baseball. They're now, playing too. much better. You know, baseball. they're bringing these young kids up, throwing them in there, and these young kids have something to prove. Well, yeah. And it's the Cincinnati, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh. They they're pretty much still going with their regular lineup, and you know maybe that has a little and, something. And to their do guys are you know tired, we're, and we're they're done. not they're not playing for yeah. anything. Yep. But uh, you know, I, I think you're right. That has, probably has a lot to do with it. Yeah. yeah. And you know, if I'm the Pirates, you know, you got two games left in the season. You can play that spoiler card, you know. Do you want the Cardinals in there? Well, we'll see. You know what? I, you, you look at the three teams, the Cardinals, the Mets, and San Francisco, and just being a baseball guy, uh, I don't know if I'd – I, I think I'd almost rather play the Cardinals over San Francisco or well, the Mets you look if at, I'm in the playoffs. Well, if you look at San Francisco's record the second half, not very good. Yeah, They've but, been kind of on the down, and you know their bats aren't as good as they were, but they do have some solid pitching. You go on, say, you're going to a five-game series, you're going to face. You're going to a short or, or even a seven-game series. you got some Marsha, Cueto, and, and, uh, and Bumgardner. I mean, yeah. those three guys, that, you know, those guys make me say, God, I hope we can get this game under our belt. You know, whereas with the Cardinals, you got Martinez, Wayne Wright's not quite where he has been, uh, and then I'd say probably Reyes. It, it, you know, that's, a guy that's only had a few yeah. games. Now Reyes is a spark plug. I, I, you don't know what you're going to get out of him, and he he's a he's a young kid that that wants to prove something. And he's uh, going to be good. I mean, he's very he, he looks he looks pretty solid. Yeah, you he, know, he's he can get that ball up there, upper nineties. Yep. Come back with that change up and kind of has a. Uh, and I hate to throw that comparison out, but if if you watch his body at work, he looks a lot like uh, Chris Carpenter. He's he's very bulldog esque. Comes right at you, and his motion is very simple and right to the plate. Well, that's uh, it. Yeah, it's hard to compare like a younger generation oh, yeah. to a Chris Carpenter, and the Cubs are the same way. They've got Kyle Hendricks have some comparisons to Greg Maddox. Now, is that fair? No, because obviously Greg but Maddox you know is what, a Hall of Famer. But and, you know whether you're going there. But just kind it, of yeah. some of the – the uh, the, the is, uh, it's a word I'm looking for. I don't know. We'll pass it. There goes another piece of ham. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. This weekend it's going to be some good baseball. Uh, especially in the National League for the uh, wild card. Your division winners, uh, obviously Chicago Cubs with 102 wins, and the Washington Nationals, they, they win the National League East, and the Dodgers with the National League West. Uh, over in the American League, you got the Boston Red Sox, uh, the Cleveland Indians, and the Texas Rangers uh, with your, uh, with your division wild card winnings. In, in, uh, the American League is pretty interesting as well. Yeah, I was going to pull that up, but... Uh, the phone doesn't seem to want to work right now. <laughs> Let's try this again. Obviously, we got you know the Mets and the San Francisco Giants in the lead for the wild card there. Uh, down in the American League, yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, you got two teams right there: Seattle and Detroit on the outside looking in, with Baltimore and Toronto leading in uh, that wild card. Uh, so yeah, the American League just as interesting. Well, I think and, I think the Yankees <laughs> with their last couple performances have kind of put themselves on the outside now. Well, so. yeah, there are four games out with yeah. two games left. So them and Houston, Houston uh, Astros, kind of a uh, surprise. I thought that they would be right up in the running. Uh, they've been kind of hot and cold all year. You know, they're they're right there, but unfortunately, yeah, you're right. They, they, they've just fallen off here towards the end. And, you know, it, like you said, hot and cold. But how interesting has it been these last few weeks, especially for the American League teams, um, you know, Detroit right there. You got Baltimore. Well, you look at all the teams. You got Boston, Baltimore, Toronto, New York. There's four teams out of the East. Mm -hmm. You got Cleveland, Detroit right there uh, in the Central. You got Texas, Seattle, and Houston. I mean, that's a lot of teams to be rooting for. You know, a lot of fan base is still affected. I mean, how great is this uh, uh, dual wild card now? I, yeah, mean, I mean, it's just. You know, extending that wild card one team, I think that's, you know, I think that's good for the league. It makes it more interesting. Oh yeah. Usually by now it's wrapped up. And now you know you got three or four teams that are still in the hunt for that uh, that second wild card spot. It just makes baseball more interesting. Uh, well, it definitely does. I mean, you got su such big fan bases, you know, across. You got fantasy owners now and whatnot that still have uh, s some some blood in the game. You know, they're still in it to win it. Uh, it, it's not just let's switch over to football season for a lot of these guys. So, pretty, pretty cool, man. And as Cardinal fan, you know, you can't – you're right there again this year. 
you know, we may not make the playoffs, but we're right there. We're still extremely competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can make a couple arguments. If a couple things went our way, we would we quite possibly be a little bit better off than what we are. But that's part of baseball, you know. You, you, you live for uh, and die by injuries, generally speaking, and hope you can put it all together by the end. Well, with being only a weekly sports show, I know it's old news, but uh, I, I feel that it would be not a good sports show if we didn't mention Jose Fernandez's passing yeah. uh, in a tragic boat a boating accident last weekend down in Miami. Uh, one of the young and upcoming pitchers that had a really bright future. I know he had Tommy John surgery, mm -hmm. set out a year. He was a rookie of the year in 2013. Uh, set out 2015, I do believe, with that surgery, 2014, and uh, came back strong. Uh, and we talked a little bit off the air, Jake, that this wasn't a guy that was going to win a Cy Young. This was a guy that was probably going to win multiple Cy Youngs. And, you know, at 24 years old, you know. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I'm completely with you on that. I mean, uh, he he had such an infectious smile and and – kid way about dealing with the game you know uh i, I didn't see his uh, long-term future with the marlins i thought he was going to be a, a great cardinal <laughs> <laughs> well he's at home down in miami i mean I he's you, out he, of yeah, cuba he, and he's that's from cuba you know, and, one of the biggest if you if you get a chance if, if you haven't done it uh youtube his uh, cy young acceptance when his grandmother comes in and and you can see uh see the little boy come out of him and, and see how pure he was and, and honest to himself and his family and how much family meant to him uh honestly i i don't care if you're a grown man or not you're you're gonna tear up a little bit because this guy truly truly got it right and understood what his abilities were doing for him and where it was taking him uh what a what a tragic loss not not only for baseball but honestly he, Good human Human being, yeah, you know, for I mean, humanity. You know, this guy, he had a, a tough road. You know, he tried to defect from Cuba four times, fourth time successful. He had to jump into the ocean to save his mother. And yeah. at 15 years old, uh, finally got over here and, uh, you know, played high school baseball down in the Miami area and just, uh, you know, I tell you, a what, big future loved and it, just loved in that community. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, uh, Hurricanes, Miami Hurricanes, are actually getting decals for their helmets uh, with his mm -hmm. initials on it, which is kind of a cool deal, you know. Yeah. A, a college team doing something like that for a baseball player. It's well, he was like respected said. through the whole Major League Baseball community. You see and, people hanging jerseys, and Miami even, yeah, yeah, and the jerseys in their dugouts, yeah. and a lot of people didn't, you know. It, he had that young fire, that young, I guess, immaturity, where you know the older veterans may not have liked some of his antics but sure. you know it, it's just the love of the game and the excitement and you know just how he expressed himself and he was some a, people was rubbed the wrong way but uh he was rated as a top 10 player in major league baseball yep as young as he is and be a top 10 player i mean that's that's right there i mean if, if you were asked today who, who would you take david price or jose fernandez you know oh jose fernandez would have been your pick absolutely you know Kershaw or Jose Fernandez? Well, it, that's a, that's a pretty well, tough one, but you still might be going with Jose Fernandez because of his you, right? You know, you would, no doubt, no doubt about it. And uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see his uh, career progress, and you know, it's, it's just a shame. Well, Jake, let's take a commercial break. We'll come back. We'll talk some college football, some NFL, and ham throwing, the new sport here on ninety six point three, the ham toss. <laughs> Welcome back to the Cheap Seats on 96.3 FM, streaming live on the web at WLCNOnline.com. You can tweet us at WLCN Sports and follow us on Facebook on the Cheap Seats page. We are at Jake's Furnishings outside for the uh, the tent reduction cell, inventory <laughs> reduction cell. Is that what we're doing today? A Big tent sale. Big tent sale. Uh, what do we got in the tent? Uh, currently in the tent, there's nothing. Uh, the employees aren't here yet, and I don't know weather-wise if we're going to bring much out, but uh, 
if we don't we also have the tents inside oh. set up so we have tents uh basically almost all of our inventory currently is at a reduced price some uh, items up to 75 percent off now did you, quite pit, a few did you pitch, pin, uh, pitch your tent up this morning or were these up already uh yeah the the, the tent was pitched and uh you know it, this, did it take a lot of work to set up the tents? What in the hell? Well, <laughs> no, I don't know. You got tents. Tents, tents are all set up. Uh, but there's nothing for in For a couple them. days now. Uh, inside there's stuff in them, but the exterior tent, there's nothing in there. Okay. Well, it's emptied. It's a false advertisement. How is it false advertisement? Well, you can't have a tent sale if you're not selling anything. I'm selling everything. Oh, everything. Everything's, is, everything's for, sale. for sale. Everything. Even the tents. I'll sell the tent. <laughs> Oh, the Lincoln Grand 8 in historic downtown Lincoln is pleased to announce the Lincoln Film Festival October 14th through the October 16th, beginning with the opening gala event featuring Dr. Samuel Wheeler, an Academy Award winner, and Logan County's very own Brenda Chapman on February, October 14th. The evening, evening begins with a brief meet and greet at the gorgeous all-new Lincoln Grand 8. At 5.30, followed by the screening of Steven Spielberg's Oscar-winning Lincoln. Hmm. Uh, immediate, immediately following, join uh, everyone for hors d'oeuvres, compliments of bean sprouts and spirits. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, yeah, get on the Lincoln 8. <laughs> Anybody wanting a chuck of ham, yeah, this feel is, free to drive by the front of Jake's Furnishings with your window down. Give us a honk prior to the entrance of Jake's Furnishings. Continue to drive by, and we will do our best to make sure you get a disc of ham. Yeah, speaking of ham, stop by the ALMH Market located at the Logan County Fairgrounds today. Open from 8 a.m. until noon, and enjoy these delicious delicious offerings from Bean Sprouts. Carved ham, <laughs> honey mustard, egg arugula, <laughs> arugula. grilled onion, Havarti on a pretzel bun or a Reuben with Gouda cheese. Homemade kraut and Thousand Island dressing on homemade marble rye bread. It could be better if it was hats off. I, I think I did that flawlessly. shabba <laughs> dabba Alright, you guys suck. Yeah. I hope you shark. You laugh so hard. shabba dabba I am for you. <laughs> All right, back back to sports. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, you guys are going to have it coming. I guarantee it. It's all fun. It's all right. You guys are just jealous. That's all I can say. What do we got in the uh, the football world today, Jacob? Uh, well, College football, some good a good game at uh, on ESPN. Uh, we got number six Stanford at number nine Washington. Uh, Washington favored by three and a half. You got Louisville at Clemson as well today. Yeah, Louisville Clemson. I think that's the night game, isn't it? Isn't that going to be like? Well, that was, was uh, Stanford and Washington was last night. See, we got the USA Today. Uh, anybody have the, in the uh, score on that? We got we got to start getting a different paper. <laughs> We're a day behind and a dollar short. You'll have that. Anyway, today's games. I'll have the sto- scores for you in moments. In just a moment. Uh, number 23, North Carolina at number 12, Florida State. Number 11, Tennessee at number 20, Georgia. That would be a good one. Uh, in the Big Ten, number 8, Wisconsin at number 5, Michigan. Real quick, the Washington versus Stanford. You want to give me a guess on a score? I'm going to say. That's wa- number 10, Washington against number 7, Stanford. I like Washington by 11. Ooh, you would hit that. Really? Oh, yeah. It was 44 to 6. Oh, Wow. It was not much of a ball game, folks. And the score wasn't that close. How close was it? <laughs> Ham! Oh! <laughs> I'm glad we're out in front of your business because you're the one going to get sued. <laughs> they love the ham. They love the ham. If you want a piece of ham, drive by and honk, and we'll chuck it at we'll you. We'll chuck the ham right at your window. All right. Uh, you got number uh, eight, Wisconsin, number four, Michigan going today. That's a 2.30 game. Number 15 uh, Nebraska at Illinois. Or Illinois at Nebraska. That's, just well, that's not going to be. What's the spread there? 120? 20, 20 points. 20, spread. that's it? Yeah. I'll take Nebraska in 20 and a half. Mm. 
put a yeah. put about fifteen thousand on that, huh? Yeah. I don't know about that half. What hat? My hat? Half. 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 Twenty and a half. Twenty and a half? It's twenty. Flat. It's just twenty no. flat. Well, if it, then it's a push. You got. You always have to have that half, Lloyd. We're gonna learn you. We're gonna learn you. <laughs> We're gonna learn you. He's gonna be learning there. Uh, number eleven, Tennessee. Number twenty-five, Georgia. That's gonna be a good one. That'll be. A what do you one. think, Lloyd? Is that gonna be a good one? That's yeah. t Tennessee with a minus three point five. Okay. I think I take Georgia in that one. You would? I would. Take them. And uh, another uh, and the last big one that we were talking about earlier, number three, Louisville against number five, Clemson. Louisville favored one point five. 1.5. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost just to pick them. So I'd take Clemson in that one as well. Would you? Yep. So I'm, I'm going, going opposite. All right. Whatever you say, I'm taking opposite. I like that. Guaranteed win. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd, we got to find you something to do. <laughs> find you something to do, boy. I'll tell you what. Tell me what. What? Oh, what are you talking about? I don't know. It's turned turned into nonsense, is what this did. We had we had such a good segment on baseball, and then it just went all to crap. Uh, you were talking about the Ryder Ryder Cup earlier. Uh, if you haven't seen the video, <laughs> you can tell the story about the uh, the golfer that was the, the, the a spectator. He, he's a spectator. He's uh, I I don't know actually what he does for a living. I heard it before. It, it, I thought it was an account, but it's not an account. Anyways, he's sitting there. He's heckling a couple of the European uh, uh, players and going on, going on. And they're at uh, one of the holes, and it's about a 12-foot putt. And uh, the the golfer goes out there and says, hey, you think you can make it? Come on up. It uh, ushers him onto the, onto the course. Guy walks up. They calmly getting ready to get, get calmly ready to – put it in and one of the other players comes up slaps a hundred dollars down makes it worth a little something he uh proceeds to knock down the putt and, i mean just it looked like lloyd kirby out there just just putting just putting putt putt golfing just putting it down on the backside and just drilled it i mean it was awesome walks away with a hundred bucks and uh, and a little fame there you know <laughs> from a guy from uh what was it, maryville north dakota that's your story. Yeah. So, pr pretty cool moment. You know, I doesn't matter. If you want to get out there and heckle a guy, maybe you'll get a chance to do something good. <laughs> More times than not, probably not. Just, You're just, just going to be so you know, Just so you know, if he would have missed that putt, oh. he would yeah. still be getting the amount of exposure is what he got. Minus $100. Yeah, minus $100 and a whole bunch of people making fun of him. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, let's take another commercial break. We come back, we're going to have ham. Ham off. We're going to have a ham off. Hats off. So stay tuned. You're in the cheap seats. 96.3 FM. I had a boy. <laughs> Be careful, you're gonna pull something. Damn! Oh, man. I took his hat off. Welcome back to the cheap seats. <laughs> As it is raining ham. <laughs> We're coming in ham. <laughs> coming in ham at you. Uh, Talk about high school show. football, uh, Jake. Uh, the Lincoln Rail Splitters travel all the way over to Jacksonville last night. Uh, take on the Crimsons over there. Uh, lose 42 to nothing. Yep. Uh, probably a wet and soggy field over there, Lloyd. Nice and yeah. nice. Yeah. So uh, phone lines are open. 737-3791. If uh, you want to call in and talk about the game, uh, you know, who stood out, who did what. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go. Uh, but uh, you guys are always more than welcome. And our phone is ringing. So if you're not going to call us, we'll call you. <laughs> Hello? What's going on here? Uh, answer the phone. Your call is being answered by voicemail. The person you were calling is not available oh. at this time. Please leave your message at the right. sound of the well, phone. We're going to leave a message. 
Hey, uh, um, uh, can you hello. please call us back when you get a chance? Give us uh, a call. We, we really, home. really, really want to talk to you. We're doing a show. It's uh-huh. not very funny. <laughs> it's good. It's, it's going all right. So it's gone ham. <laughs> all right, you got you got to hang up there, Jim. <laughs> well, we're gonna go all day. <laughs> uh, so Lincoln, yeah, Lincoln falls to Jacksonville last night, 42 to nothing. Some of the other scores going on in Central State Eight. Uh, good game. It was on Channel 23 last night. The Glenwood Titans, the Eisenhower Panthers, both come in, or the Eisenhower Panthers come in uh, undefeated. Glenwood takes them down, 44 to 34. Uh, another good game in the Central State Eight: oh, yeah. Landfair Lions and Springfield <clears throat> Senators. Landfair Lions coming into the contest uh, without a win, and they you win. can throw the record the records out the window yeah. on that one. Uh, Fifteen to fourteen, and from my understanding, uh, it, was it some, wasn't that close. Well, some about a, a blocked field goal at the end, or something. Oh, really? So. Uh, didn't wow. really get all the details, but that was a, uh, a text I got late last night. So, cool. congratulations to the Lanfear Lions with their first victory of the season. Uh, Rochester all over MacArthur, 64 to 19. Uh, Sacred Heart Griffin, 42 to zero over Southeast. And that's looks like about it. Well, and, and again, if anybody want, wants to call in and. Uh, talk about the game we definitely love to talk about you know some of the players and whatnot uh you know we know it was a loss and whatnot but at the same time those players the the players are playing hard they're doing the best they can out there and you know we'd love to hear about some of the good moments and whatnot i mean you know that's what our short show's about so uh uh, if, if somebody wants to talk to the coach and have him call in or if somebody just wants to call in for him you know we're we're here so and that that's the thing you know this is a this is for we're not here to to bash on our football program we're gonna look no. for, we're gonna look for the positive things well any of the pro i mean it's not yeah. necessarily even that yeah. you, you got know, the golf yeah. you got the uh, cross country teams you got the tennis yeah especially the tennis team i mean that they're great when they come and, on yeah, here and on the you show know? you're never ever gonna hear us bash on a team for, no for for losing or whatever it, you it, know we got to find the positives you know these kids are out in every sport and everything that goes on at the community high, link community high school absolutely they're busting their butts and they're not going out looking to lose or getting beat up they're out there trying and, and win or lose i'll be honest we have some great kids in this community mm-hmm. and, and they're doing their best right if they're if they're not always successful that's whatever what it is but they're still good kids right. and we want to be able to talk about them and, and let the community ha- hear, hear them uh and hear their words and whatnot right so. and you know especially seniors this is their last this is their last oh yeah their last, know, hurrah. Their last hurrah. Hurrah. yeah and you know i coach these kids all the way through jfl and there's only maybe a handful of them left that stuck with it but you know these kids are something special they've been playing football since they were in second grade uh, and you know they've they've stuck with it, and you know what? They deserve some recognition. Yep. They deserve some kudos. They deserve a hats off. So oh, right you now, go. you know this. Our, Jim, that's your cue. Now for hats off. Take <laughs> your, your hats off, off now. now. <laughs> there goes Timmy. <laughs> Class of 95 grad. All right. Oh, is this still going? <laughs> See, he likes to play. He'll play in the back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, my hat's off. You know, I, I, I had it earlier, but I'm switching it. My hat's off go to the senior football players. You know, they've been playing football for how many years? Uh, many. Since they were in second grade. And every season they go out and they bust their butts. And, you know, they try and they stick with it. They go out on a Friday night and they give it their all, and uh, you know we're going to get them on the show here hopefully before the season's over. So we'll get that uh, we'll get that set up. So my hats off go to the senior football players. Yippee-yo! Hey, can I get in on this next time? Like background. My hats off will go to a man who. Has played in 1,771 games, seven, over 7,000, nearly 7,500 plate appearances, uh, 1,100 runs through his career. Hank Aaron? 1,994 hits. 
448 RBIs, 32 triples, almost 300 home runs, 295, and over 1,100 RBIs and 100 stolen bases. Matt Holliday. Congratulations to Matt Holliday. He's had a, a hell of a run with the St. Louis Cardinals, as well as the Colorado Rockies and Oakland Athletics. And uh, it looks like his uh, career in St. Louis is coming to a close. Uh, I think I think he still has a career in, ahead of him if he can make if he can get on with the team uh, in Maybe the American in League. American League, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a DH where you know. The guy's got power. He's he's built like a truck, and uh, you got to think this year hitting the hand. I mean, that was a horrible injury, you know, to sustain, especially uh, as an older player, but even a younger player. If you get that, you're pretty much done for the year. So, would love to see him finish his career in St. Louis. But so is he just? I mean, he just came into pinch hit and he's done, or is he gonna? If they make the playoffs, I would, I would is he all, gonna have the opportunity to play? Or? I would say, as maybe in the uh, pinch hitting role, I don't think he'll be able to play the outfield. You can't take a chance with that thumb, you know. Uh, I mean, you do anything wrong if you catch that ball square on it, you're you're done again for a long period of time. I mean, I know it'd be the off season, but as a pinch hitter, I mean, obviously he's still got some power. And depending on how his hand feels today, I guess, he may have an opportunity to get another bat today and maybe tomorrow, which would be pretty, I mean, a, a great ending for a guy that's been a, a really good Cardinal in the middle of our lineup for years now, I think seven, eight years. So it, it'd be, you know, it was a nice tribute last night to see him hop up there and hit a home run. All right. All right. Lloyd, do you have a hats off? No. He just makes up the jingles. Hey, hey hats hey. off. All right, that was it for hats off. So another fine segment. <laughs> I'm not sure about the song. Uh, that's kind of in the middle there. It's not it's uh, not, not his best. Oh, that's that was supposed from, to be from oh, Wolfstock? Oh, yeah, oh, we cut it short. Well, we week, didn't get didn't to we? do it, Wolfstock, because we got kicked out. Oh, we got a call? Oh, all right. Uh, go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Hey, how you guys doing? How you guys hey, doing? we're doing good. How you doing today? Good, good. Good. I uh, got the kids out there today uh, after a, a tough, tough loss over in Jacksonville last night. Probably one of the furthest trips that we have. Uh, what uh, yeah. what did what'd you take from the game? You know, I think just really, you know, played with a lot of pride and, you know, a lot of poise. You know, there's was a pretty physical game. You know, a lot of a lot of talking back and forth from the, from the stands and from the kids, you know, on the field. And, you know, they, they held their own. You know, they played tough and kept their head up. And, you know, they played till the end there. And, you know, got to give the kids a lot of credit for that. Absolutely. You're coming off a, a homecoming weekend, and we're midway through the season, just a little over half. Kids are maybe getting a little fatigued, uh, maybe some uh, injuries mounting up. Sure. How, how are the kids reacting? And, uh, you know, how, how are the, the senior leaders, how are they uh, how are they going about their business? Sure, yeah, you know, it was a tough one, you know, last weekend to MacArthur. You know, we really wanted that one to our kids, and, you know, they wanted it for themselves. Um, you know, the kids and the seniors are really staying positive. You know, got to give them a lot of credit. They they understand that there's still, you know, some games on the schedule to be played. And, you know, I think they understand that their time together is coming to an end, and, you know, they're just trying to get the most out of it. And, you know, they're really doing well. I'm really happy and proud of them for keeping them together like they have. Yeah, and that, that's the thing, keeping keeping their spirits up. And, you know, we've talked about it before past years. You know, these kids are going in every night, giving it their all. You know, at the end of the night, the scoreboard's not showing it. It's obviously not the results that we're wanting. But as long as these kids are going out and giving 110% and, and proving and teaching those younger, you know, younger kids that, hey, things aren't going the way we want, but you still got to go out and give it your all, you know, an all-out effort. Oh, absolutely. You know, they really, they really just keep playing. They, you know, they come to practice every day, you know, ready to work. You know, and we're getting a lot better. You know, it's just, it's not showing on the scoreboard necessarily. But when you're, when you play the tough teams that we do week in, week out, right. you know, it's, it's not going to be glaring every week. You know, it's the little things, you know, in the course of the game that we're just keep getting better on, you know. I mean, you got home, you know, in the homecoming game, running for 280 yards as a team. Right. You know, that's pretty, pretty nice accomplishment. You know, you know. So, 
you know, it just we're just got to keep working on not allowing the big play. You know, right. that's what's really killing us, and we just got to keep getting better on you know up front on both sides of the ball. We just got to get bigger in the off season, add some size, those type of things, and we'll have plenty of experience. So right, and that that's key, coach. You said it right there. Off season, you know, football is just not a a three or four month sport. You know, during the summer times, you know, that's really when you you need your kids in the the weight room lifting weights and that that's where they're going to get better not so much uh you know on the field or during practice it's that off season where they really have to take it serious and get in that weight room and make themselves stronger and faster yes you know and a lot of them play multiple sports which is phenomenal which is what we want but they just gotta you know they've got to take some ownership and use the most out of their athletic pe class that they take you know and get get the most out of that, and really commit to us in the summertime in the weight room and those type of things. And yeah, we we just got to really focus on getting bigger, faster, stronger. Uh, you know, it's going to really help with the injury prevention there. So knock out some of these little bumps and bruises that maybe wouldn't have be happening then. So yeah, we just really got to get them bought in and get them in in the off season if they're not in another sport. You know, and that, that's really where what's going to be key for us. So, with, you know, getting getting after it here. Right. We got some home cooking the next two weekends. Next two uh, games are at home. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, Atlanta here on the seventh, and then uh, Southeast Senior Night on the fourteenth. They'll have the JFL night. You know, Junior Football League kids out uh, next Friday night. Um, right. A little introduction there before the game. Let's let's talk a little bit real quick about the, our youth football program. I've seen you out the fields, kind of looking around, watching these kids. Uh, you know, being the first year in Lincoln, what it would have, uh, I don't know how big it is, youth football up north. I'm sure, it's, you know, where you came from, I'm sure it's pretty big too. But uh, sure. what, have, what have you uh, taken from, uh, you know, our youth program? I'm, you know, really happy with the kids' effort. You know, they're, they're playing hard. You know, one game out there, uh, you know, the little guy beat up Chatham pretty good. So that was always, you know, that's always exciting to right. see that. Uh, yeah, you know, I thought you know, the coaches are out there working really hard to you know, put in, they're donating their time for the kids, and you know, the kids out there seem to have really be enjoying their experience. Um, you know, I was out there for the, you know, picked up myself a pork shop dinner the other night myself. Um, you know, just doing a lot of really good things for the kids and trying to trying to keep that organization top notch as it can. You know, can be there. So I'm really happy with it. Yeah, and you know, it's been going on for years, and it just seems like our numbers are always really big in youth football. And as they get older, that kind of dwindles. I don't know if that's because they have other sports that they uh, concentrate on or lose interest or what. But uh, we got to try to keep these kids uh, interested in football and, you know, stick with it. And the senior class now is the first class that we started when they started in second grade. And we were kind of curious how those kids would stick together and go through high school. Well, you know, we, we've seen it dwindle down to there's probably only maybe a handful of seniors on the team how many seniors do we have out this year coach oh uh, we got about it's actually about over the couple about 15 15 actually. yeah we're about 15 so it's a pretty high number i think for you know where our roster is at um but you know you always want more right you know you always <clears> want more so that's something we're going to strive on you know i'm going to keep recruiting our hallways here at the high school you know i think there's a lot of kids walking these halls that can help us Right. Um, you know, I just got to keep working, working on, you know, working on that, and I'll be out at the JFL fields, you know, a couple more. You know, try to sneak out this weekend again, mm -hmm. and then you know, of course, be go to the junior highs again in the springtime, and try to tell them about what they're trying to do here next year. Right. Well, coach, thanks for taking some time to talk with us. Uh, we we always appreciate it, and you know, we uh, look forward for you to call next weekend and uh, letting us know how that uh, Lanfear game goes. Absolutely, yeah. I'll give you guys a call next weekend. All right, Coach, thanks. All right, thanks, Coach. Bye-bye. That's uh, Coach Silky calling in from the high school. Uh, you know, he hits on all the points. These kids, they're out there. and We've said oh, yeah. it We've said it multiple, multiple times, and people are probably getting sick of hearing it, but these kids are out there busting their butts. You know, people don't realize it. You know, they get up early for school, go to school, practice right after, have to get home, do homework, and football is a grueling sport. You know, NFL, they get some days off. I know it's not a comparison because it's obviously the elite, but 
these kids aren't getting a break. You know, oh, they yeah. go to school, they practice, they go home, do their homework, go to bed, get up, do it all over again. Uh, you know, they, they get a Sunday off, but then Saturday mornings they're getting up, going in, treating those bumps and bruises, oh, yeah. and maybe watching a little film and going over some things that maybe they can improve on. And, you know, it. Well, I, th- I think the culture's changing in the football program, you know. I think it, yeah. it, and it, you don't do that overnight, but I think it's heading mm-hmm. in the right direction. Like you said, there's 15 seniors this year. Right. And that's, a, that's a pretty big number compared to what it has been last few and years. And I'm sure so. there's I – don't, I don't have a roster in front of me, but there's probably seniors that are playing that they didn't play in JFL. Yeah. And not, I'm not saying JFL is the stepping stone for high school, but it's nice to get the but, basics you know, out of the way before you get to school. Yeah, yeah. You, you hear both sides of it. You know, should we put, should these kids be playing this young? Uh, are they burn out by the time they're eighth grade because they're playing every year? I can see both sides of it, but, you know, concussions are a big topic. But yeah. if you see these kids playing second, third, fourth, fifth, they're not hitting – really hard you know because i mean there there are some as as i see a giggle but not every play you know the linemen aren't taking a beating like they will be in high school so uh, concussions i haven't seen i've ref several games uh out there and injuries do happen i mean but but injuries can happen happen in any i mean i i remember playing uh Boy, I tell you what, it's probably my fifth or sixth grade year in baseball. I was on third base with probably too big of a lead. I run back uh, on a pickoff. It got drilled in the back of the head. And I tell you what, I think I got my bell rung from that. Yeah. You know, I come up, I'm like, oh. Well, here, here's you know, an so, example. Like I said, anything can happen. I mean, just on the baseball front, injuries can happen. Uh, who was it? The New York Yankees. They had a bench clearing brawl. And a guy from the bullpen was running out there and tore his calf yeah. muscle. Tore his calf, yep. <laughs> so, you know, freak things happen. Injuries can happen. Those bullpen guys are weird anyways. <laughs> yeah. He must not have stretched before he ran out. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep stretched because you never know when there's going to be a brawl. <laughs> there's going to be a, a brawl. Bench, <laughs> brawl. So, yeah, I mean, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And, you know, and the youth, our youth football program, is it's been good for years. We compete. Yep. You know, we don't win every game, but like I tell the kids when I'm out there, you know, they get a little discouraged because they're getting beat. I'm like, you guys aren't out here to win every game. You're out here to get better. And, and real quick, I want to give a thanks to Coach for calling in. Absolutely. I mean, that was great. Uh, and, and honestly, any of the coaches or any of the fans that want to call in, we can talk volleyball, tennis. Uh-huh. I mean, any of them. Any of them. Any. Absolutely. I'd rather talk about the, our local kids than I would, uh, you know, all mm-hmm. the all this Major League yeah. Baseball stuff and all that. I mean, that stuff's right. fine and dandy. You know, we can talk about that all day long. But let's face it, we're here because we're a local radio station right. talking about our local kids and our local product. And sometimes, so. sometimes it's hard to find that information. Yeah. I mean, oh, we, do, we do have Facebook, but it's not always on there. And, you know, and games happen late and there's games going on we don't know about so yeah our uh, our airways ham. are open to anybody <laughs> ham for you oh boy <laughs> yeah. yep that's gonna sell a lot of furniture that's right gonna, there <laughs> that's great ham so yeah we got two home games coming up we got uh Lanfair lions this friday and in the following week we got the spartans from southeast and that is senior night and uh I think next Friday, I think he said it's going to be JFL night. If that was, did I hear that correctly? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ed, Ed McMahon over there. That is correct. <laughs> Where's my million dollar check? Yeah. Prior sitting right beside my power washer, isn't it? <laughs> oh, boy. I'm glad he didn't have a mic. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how much time we got? Three minutes? Uh, do we want to talk Chicago Bears? No, we don't. Your Bears. What about the, the Bulls? The Bulls? Uh, you guys, you and Jim are pretty excited. I, I tell you what. Um, I, la- last year, I kind of felt a little bit of the NBA bug towards the end of the season. I don't know if it was because uh, the Warriors playing the way they were or what it was. I'm definitely not a big LeBron guy. Uh, but the NBA seemed a little more fun last year to me. Uh, and this year, you know, I wasn't real excited about them 
getting the older players with Wade and Rondo, but it is kind of exciting, you know, something different. I wasn't a big fan of Derrick Rose, never, you know. Yeah, I wasn't either, and I was kind of skeptical about when they got rid of Rose, when they got rid of Joakim, but now that I see what's going on, great move. Derrick Rose is in some hot water again, and Joakim running his jaws. Joe jo- jo- Keem back to being Joe Keem. Joe Keem. So, you know. <laughs> you know, I think that's just a disaster waiting to happen over there in New York with Carmelo Anthony. You know what? And we, we, you can look at it however you want. As long as LeBron James is breathing, they're not getting out of no. the East. <laughs> you know? I mean, the East is, is basically the, the conference that goes through LeBron and he, well, he, I don't, got, I don't yeah. think he's playing on letting the reins go anytime soon. You got Cleveland in the east, and you got Golden State in the west. And, uh, and, and San Antonio. And Golden San, State and San Antonio are well, right there, both of them, one and two. You think but I'd, say, I, I'd say now, well, they picked up uh, the, the guy from uh, the Pacers, too. I can't think of his name. George. You thinking Paul George? But uh, Jeff George or <laughs> Boy George? Boy George. <laughs> they got Boy George to <laughs> sing the yeah. national anthem. <laughs> I'm going to buy that jersey. I'm buying that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, you know, Kevin Durant out there now in Golden State. I mean, what, they win 73 games last year? Yeah, they may not lose one, huh? Ooh. They're, it, they're, There's not they're enough basketballs be, to go around. They're going to be t- pretty tough. Well, yeah. the thing is, is, Steph Curry doesn't mind sharing the ball. Oh, yeah? He doesn't want his 40 points a game? I don't think he Chucking cares. I, I, th- I think if he's not getting – if he's not getting 35 points, he's going to have 20 or, or 20 assists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is more important, the assists or the or the points? Well, you got to have more points than the other team to win. So I'm going to say points. They don't yeah. base it on assists. If you're if you're getting assists, po- assists means there's points no. right after the assist. That does. I don't know. There's That's correct. That, all I'm saying. Boy, is you're smart. Where'd you get they're, all your smarts? They're going to be. Uh, they're going to be passing that ball around. They've got a lot of guys that can score it. All right. So. Well, speaking of scoring, we just nailed one today. Done. Done. It's ten o'clock. Ham. Ham for everybody. <laughs> uh, join us next week as we will be. Joe Ryan. Joe Ryan. Are we at Joe's? Uh, Joe. Uh, Sports complex. Joe, you going to be? Uh, you going to be around next week, buddy? Uh, if you are, we're at your place at 509 Pulaski. I'd like to thank the Hampton Inn for sponsoring our new game, the Ham Toss. The Ham Toss. That is kind of a fun game. It I is. made one of the guys' window. Yep. And uh, we will be back next week at Joe Ryan's. Uh, and get on out here to Jake's today and make it your own because he's having his uh, a big tent sale. Tent sale. Tent sale a inventory reduction. Sale. And it all it all bumps up. Lots of up products up to seventy five percent off retail. Really. I'm going to walk around, and I'm going to open up Lloyd's checkbook, and we're going to have some fun. So thanks for listening to Cheap Seats on 96.3 FM. Good day. Yeah, we're going to do